everybody, this is Gail. Welcome to my hashtag Be Bodacious channel. Tonight we're going to do some cooking on the Nostalgia Mini Griddle. This is what I cook on when I'm out in the van. And frankly, I thought I wouldn't be home tonight, but I am. I have solar in my van, so I'm not doing anything different on the Mini Griddle here than I would be if I was in the van. So just pretend. Oh, pretend this is a van. Pretend you hear birds and the wind blows lightly blowing in the breeze on the trees and the leaves and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is, yay, Lori's in. Hi, Lori Jean. Welcome, welcome. She is with Women's Station Channel and we have Lori right here. So um, I've got an assortment of things to cook, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the mini griddle because it's not heated yet. And obviously you have to do that. So it's super, super easy. I get this moved over here. There's not even an off and on switch, only a plug in. So here we go. I work my way around. I thought about plugging it in. I thought about plugging it in earlier, but here's the thing. I want you to see this in real time so you can get an idea of how this compares to actually cooking at home. So when I plug the mini griddle in, that's when the light comes on. And when it goes off, that's when it's all preheated and ready to go. So that's how you know. The assortment of things that I have to cook today is sausage. I'm going to try to make a biscuit. It's going to be flat, but it should still work. Don't worry. I'm going to make a potato patty or a potato pancake. I've got some mashed potatoes left from earlier, and I think I have just enough to make one decent sized potato patty. I'm going to probably do some fried rice in it. Uh, and I've got soft tacos. I've got a tiny little piece of steak left from the other day, uh, some cabbage cut for soft tacos, and I may try sauteing some squash. So how does this sound, you all? Let's see, Lori's going to pretend that I am out in nature. Thank you. You can hear the wind whistling and the wild animals. Now, actually, the animal that you hear will be a domestic animal, and he is in the room back here playing with dad so yeah we're all gearing up for his birthday would you all believe that he's going to be two years old in just a couple of days the 8th of may my service dog is going to be two so i'm all really super excited about that i don't know what we're going to do yet but i'm going to think of something because he's put up with me now for almost a year so i'm going to do something tomorrow and then his gotcha date when he came to live with us is next month it's in june so we're going to be doing something then too i just don't know what yet so all righty well just to give you some a real-time idea this nostalgia mini griddle is preheated i think you can see that the light's off so what shall we cook first you all you want to try a biscuit let's try a biscuit Let, let's let's do that um i've got some bisquick right here and i left my water over here good grief now let me come over here and get it so this is just like at home i've got the little bowl of bisquick which i'm gonna hold over here and mix up so y'all can see it and just like at home i'm gonna eyeball the water because i don't ever measure anything I probably should then just just give it a stir yes i did indeed say just like at home and i am home so <laughs> that's all right we need just a little bit more water now when i'm in the van i only whip up a little bit of this at a time so that's what i'm doing tonight is just a little a little at a time that way you guys get the same feel and these little mini griddles are neat you can take them traveling with you i've done that 
I have taken him actually into a hotel with me. Okay, so we have our, our biscuit dough. I've got my griddle, but I need to put some butter in it, I think, for this. I don't usually um, put butter in the griddle, but I think with this being a biscuit, I think I will. Let me scoot this over here. Let me try tipping this down. Can y'all see that okay? I'm going to scoot this over toward you all just a little bit more. So you can see it there. Oh, the mashed taters. Yes, I did say taters. I'm in the South. I'm entitled to do that once in a while. Not too often though, right? So, here we go. I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to this. Not a whole lot, just enough to get it started. Um, be careful too when you all do your griddle cooking. You don't want to use anything that's going to scrape the top of the griddle and leave scratches in it because that just makes it harder to clean and it kind of shortens the working span of your griddle a little bit there just simply because you want it to be non-stick for as long as possible. It's like your non-stick pans at home. You all know there's a life cycle to those. So, all right, here we go. We are going to put the little biscuit in here. I don't know how you all do your biscuits, but I usually just do drop biscuits. So this is not any different than being at home yet. Add that right back on top and I'm going to close the lid. Okay. Pull you back up. So we've got the lid closed and let's see here. The box says to cook the biscuits uh, 10 to 12 minutes. So you all, let's go ahead. Um, I'm gonna holler at Google. No, I'm not gonna holler at Google cause that'll set your all's phones off. I heard about that one time. So I'm gonna go over and cautiously whisper at Google. Okay, Google, set time for six minutes. All right, six minutes, starting now. Okay, so that one's in there for a big whopping six minutes. Okay, Lori says that she sees it and she likes how I angle the camera down. Yeah, I wanted to so y'all could see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back later on after the live stream and those movements of raising and lowering. I'm gonna clip some of those out uh, because we're gonna be actually doing that a few times. So, all right, so while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and mix up our next item because our next item, I'm gonna do a pancake. So a little bit more of the, this quick and when I am when I am out in the van here's something that I do if like for example I know once I start leaving home that I'm going to be gone you know a certain number of days so what I will do is I will take the biscuit and divide it up into some little bags and put the portions in it whether I want a biscuit or a pancake whatever I think I might do with it. And that way it's all ready to go. And it, one of the other hints that I do is on the pancake mix, I like to go ahead and add just a touch. I mean, just a very small amount of sugar in with it. So I'll go ahead and mix that in as well. And just add the water that I need to shake it up in the bag, clip the end of it off, and then I'm using the bag for my pancake mix. So it's just one of those really easy, easy things that I like to do um, before I'm leaving to go out on the road, just makes life easier. And again, with this, with the pancake mix, I do it just the same way that I do with the biscuits. I just put it in there and I just eyeball it. 
And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we're gonna go ahead and plan on this working. And I think I have actually overdone it. Whoops. Yeah, I have. So a little bit overdone on that one, but that's okay. I will go ahead and put some more Bisquick in it. Sorry, y'all, I'm getting this all over me. That's just the way it is sometimes, right? So I guess if we're going to pretend that I'm out on the road, I guess I need to say, hey, you all, those are the kids over at the next campground making the noise, right? That was a joke. There is no kids at the next campground. All right, so I've got this mixed up. There we go. I think that's about the texture pancake mix there. It always gets a little thicker while it stands. So I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute before I get ready to actually make the pancakes. And we'll check it out then. So part of what I'm making today is I'm doing like a full day's worth of food for you basically. I've got breakfast with a pancake and the biscuit and I'm gonna cook a sausage. This is a kind of sausage that I buy when I'm out on the road, it's flat. So that way it goes in the refrigerator a little easier. And I can use this, um, obviously I can use it for breakfast. So if I wanna do a omelet or if I wanna do like gravy and biscuits, I do have a little hot pot that I can do hot water in to make gravy, toss a piece of sausage in. If I wanna do dir dirty rice, um, I can do that. It's just got some more options. And I like it that way. I like options. Options are good, right? Okay, let's see what I got in here. I just got a beef, so I want to check and see what that is because I want to make sure it's not something that I need to answer for the channel because sometimes I have people who will text me or tweet me while I'm doing this and they'll be like, hey, what time are you going live? And that's 7 p.m. on Saturdays. So, yeah. Okay. Nope. That was my grandbaby's mom. I think she sent a photo, but I show that online during a YouTube stream just because I can't get it all. Yeah. Coordinated like that. So, that's what that is. All right. Um, and I want to know from you all if there's something in particular that you want me to cook sometime so you can see it. I'll be happy to look into that. Just let me know. Okay. All right. I hear lots of dinging. So anyway, um, I like my mini griddle because it is really easy to take and set up and clean and use. You're not going to get a whole lot simpler than this just because it's small it's, and it's compact. The main thing you have to worry about as far as storage, stop. The main thing you have to worry about as far as storage is just putting it away when it's cool and not while it's hot. All right, let's see how this is. Tilt this down so you can see it. There we go. Now this was six minutes, you all. And I have left my thing over here. That looks really good from here. And this puffed up big and thick. Let me turn this on. And we'll check the temperature of this. 200 is where you want baked goods. And 
this is over the 200 mark. Whoops. 207. So it should be done. It's not as flat as I thought it might be. Ow. It is hot. It is nice and hot. So let me just scoot this out of the way a little bit. There's the biscuit. And you can see inside it's done and it's flaky and oh my gosh, it smells great. So, okay. I'm going to pull that right back over here. And it tastes good. It tastes really good, actually, y'all. So let me get the next thing. Which is going to be the sausage. All right. So I'm just going to set the biscuit aside over here. And I'll go ahead and we'll do the sausage for the next one. And I'm not sold on any brand of sausage as long as it's already cut up into patties. So this happens to be Bob Evans, but don't feel like I'm stuck on that because I am not. So for these things like sausage, sometimes um, you may want to put a plate underneath it. These usually don't have that much fat in them. I'm going to get through two pieces tonight. Yep. Okay, just up just a little bit. There we go. All right. We will let that cook. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how long sausage needs to cook. Hey, we got Valerie Reese in the house. So we've got Lori and Valerie. So welcome to both of you all. So do either one of you know how long sausage needs to cook? I'm not sure. Four minutes. Does four minutes sound okay? It's 721. So we'll do, we'll say four minutes. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stick the sausage back in the refrigerator. That'll be good. Because there are so many things you can cook on this little griddle. Let's see. Uh, Lori Jean says about six minutes on each side. Okay, good. Then we'll look at that. It's 722 right now. It was 721 when I put it on. So I will try to keep track of what time it is. Not going to promise. So if I go over, somebody yell at me, okay? The, the nice thing about the mini griddle is sometimes it doesn't take as long. I put six minutes on this biscuit, and that was plenty of time. The reason that it doesn't always take as long is because you're cooking on both sides simultaneously, the top and the bottom. So it cooks usually quicker. Valerie says uh, she's not a big sausage eater, uh, but she and she rarely ever cooks it. Some people like it and some don't. I do sometimes because... I don't know. I, I, sometimes, especially like if I'm out on the road, I just start craving things. And sausage is one of those things that I'll start craving every once in a while. Um, yeah. So, But I have to have mild. I don't do too much of the hot. Now, if I'm making spaghetti sauce, I'll bet they're off. I want a mild and I want a hot on the Italian sausage going into the spaghetti, right? And believe it or not, you can cook Italian sausage on here. I've done it, um, but you want to slice it into, you know, like thick pieces and slice them rounds. So you want to slice them like that, except as Italian sausage and put it on there. It do four or five of those and it makes a really good sandwich when you're out on the road. Really good. 
So I'm going to slip this back over here. I don't think I'm going to need it for a little bit. I think I am going to have to add just a little bit of water to the pancake mix here in a few minutes, but we'll see. And that's just because it thickens up as you make it. So I think we're at the point with the pancake mix right now where I could go ahead and use it. But I think if it waits, if I wait for just a few more minutes while the sausage is cooking, I think I'm going to have to thin it out. So, yeah. I'm going to be quiet for just a second and see if you guys can hear this. Can you all hear that pretty well? That's the sizzle that the griddle makes. And I actually had somebody tell me that they didn't feel like the griddles would get hot like you would have on the stove. And I said, well, it, the griddles may not get as hot as your stove, but these little mini things, these little mini griddles will certainly get hot. Uh, the wattage on this is low. I think it's like 550 watts, which makes it really good for me when I'm out in the van. Um, cause I don't have to worry of too much about overdoing my solar or overdoing the inverter. It, it works out really well, which is why I like cooking with it. And I can do pretty much anything on this in a smaller amount, um, like I would at home. So, yeah. Okay. Valerie doesn't hear it. Um, but she has, okay, she's got fans running in the house. Okay. All right, I'm just checking this out real quick here. Give it another minute. Let's see. Yep, this looks like it is. Good gracious, I can't see my thing. 726 is what it is now. So it's been about five minutes. So we'll give it another minute. And I've got my meat thermometer out here. So I'm going to be testing temperatures on everything uh, just so we can all see that they do indeed get cooked and come up to temperature. And I like these little instant read thermometers. No joke. Not it. Not any type of brand. I just like the instant read type. It really helps. And so for breads and stuff, you want a, a good 200 degrees on the breads to get those cooked through, um, which we got on the biscuit and similar to the pancakes and so forth. Okay. All right. So this has been cooking now. It's 727. And it went on originally at 721. So we're going to pull these and check the temps. They look really good. They smell really good. But are they done? So I'm getting 190 on this. So yes, ma'am, we, and yes, sirs out there, we should be good. Hopefully you can hear that sizzling going on. And I'm gonna set this over here with our biscuit, grabbing paper towel. So here we are, there we are with our sausage and our biscuit. So 
So, okay, the griddle, the griddle is warm. And what I want to do now is while it's warm and I've just cooked this is I want to go ahead and wipe it out because this is the easiest time to clean it. And all you got to do when you clean it is wipe it off with a paper towel and you are good to go. Now, if I'm doing it in the van and I'm going to store it, then I'm going to wipe it out with a Clorox wipe. But I'm not going to be storing this one for several minutes. I'm just wiping it out to get it ready for the, for the next big thing. And that is going to be the pancake. Woo! So it's the same principle, exact same principle. I'm going to add just a touch of butter on this. Um, and that is just because I've started to get this scratched up a little bit. But I've had it, what, three, four years now? So I, I guess it's got plenty of reason to start getting scratched. I just noticed that the other day. I was like, oh, no. So there we are. And pancake okay, mix. Yep. Let me just get just a touch of water in here. Yeah, that's better. I should have gotten a bigger spoon. This is <laughs> this is a teaspoon and it's working like a teaspoon would, which means not very well. But that's okay. This is just going to give you guys an idea. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to add a couple of blueberries to that. I've got some right here in my refrigerator. Yeah, do some little blueberries there. Here we go again. Now, if I'm in the van and I'm doing blueberries in the pancake, then what I'll do is go ahead and cook up a few of the blueberries on the griddle with just a little bit of butter, maybe. Uh, and if I've got a little package of sweet and low or a package of sugar, I might toss that in and make kind of like a um, just a, a basically cooked fruit and put that over the pancakes instead of doing it with syrup or whatever. That's because I don't like carrying syrup because it can spill. It can make a mess. Um, also, I think it's a little healthier. You're not getting like syrup stuff. You are getting uh, some fruit in with that. And I just I think that's it just works for me. Let's let's just say that. Um, yeah. Also, I have I have cut up strawberries. I've made stuffed pancakes. There is just a lot that you can do. Like I said, if you can do it at home, you can do it on the mini griddle. You don't have to be out doing van life on the mini for the mini griddle either. You don't have to justify getting a mini griddle that way. I have a friend of mine that I talked to and we were talking about the griddle. And her thing is, she says that she wants to get one because she trusts her son to cook on the mini griddle after school where she doesn't really trust him to like heat up the stove, heat up the oven. I don't know if that's any, you know, better or worse, but she likes the idea better. So if she does that and lets me know, then I'll let you all know how that goes. Okay. Yeah. But they're, they're fun and they're useful. I know when I first got it, um, my husband and I were talking, you know, like it's so small. Like, what are you going to do with it? And how are you actually going to use it? And I was like, there's tons of ways to use a mini griddle. 
And I think we've experimented with it enough to realize that there's tons of ways to use a mini griddle. One of the, another one of the things that I like to do, like with vegetables and stuff, is saute them on the griddle. Because again, you're, you're doing the top and the bottom at the same time. So you get this really nice sear and it just does really, really well. Or I think it does anyway. Y'all have to try it for yourself. Um, but it does have the, the trade-off is that it's, it's small. So you're not going to want to do like a whole family cooking on the griddle you're going to want to do for for one person or for a snack or so forth and yeah i think it works great for that but i don't know that i'd want to do it you know for a whole family because you're only going to cook a small portion at a time let's see oh definitely not quite done yet we're getting really really close let me show you So we're getting there. We're just almost there on the pancake. Turn it up. And again, if there's something that you all want to see me cook on this or show you all how to do, let me know. Yeah, Valerie's saying it would be good for the dorm room. And I think it would be too. Um, some dorms are not really keen on allowing major cooking appliances, and this is small. So if a student is not sure whether they can use it or not, I'm, they can tell them. The dorm folks are happy to make everyone aware of the rules. And yeah, we're getting there, almost there on this. Almost there. Actually, I think I'm going to need a bigger spatula for it. So let me grab that. And bigger is relevant. You're not going to want a big anything. Let me show you my, my usual size that I, I cook with is this one right here. And I have a small spatula that I use for turning uh, because it has to, it's, obviously it has to fit on the griddle and you don't want to go too big. So, okay, let's see. Another way that you can tell, and we're just about there, when you're cooking on, on the mini griddle and you start to see the steam escape, uh, you know you're getting close to the end of the cooking. I don't know if you can tell right now, um, but there is some steam escaping from the griddle right now. It may be too light that you all can't see it. And it's just about to quit, so. That tells us that we're getting closer. Yep, we are. Now, I'm going to go ahead this time and I'm going to flip it over because it is falling apart. Hold on a second. I got to get another plate to put this on. And again, you all, this is in real time, so you can see exactly how long it's going to cook. And I flipped it over, and you can see the blueberries. And normally, if I'm, if I'm having pancakes for breakfast, um, I will go ahead and do a couple of them. I'm just demonstrating for you guys tonight. So 
I don't need to do all that many. Okay. There it is with all the blueberry stuff in it. I'm going to set this over here for a minute. I'm going to wipe this out. So, all right. So, this next thing that I'm going to cook, I actually have not made it before on the mini griddle. And that is, I'm going to try doing a potato pancake. Wish me luck. We're going to see simultaneously how this goes. If it's going to be a disaster or not, we're going to find out together. First, I'm going to get this wiped down real quick so my potato won't taste like a blueberry. It's a little too Willy Wonka for me. Let's see. Okay. All right. So on this... I've got a little bit of potato left from last night or earlier today, whenever it was I had potatoes, I don't remember. Not been functioning that well. Anyhow, yeah, I think COVID fog is about to kick my butt for the past couple of days. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Bisquick to it. Normally I would add just a smidge of flour, but Bisquick's what I have. I'm likely to have either one when I'm out on the road. If I'm in the van, I might have this quick or flour. doing here yes and that big clunk you heard was indeed the, the dog I can't believe he's got a birthday staring me in the face in two days oh my gosh and the big thing is that Pipsy's going to be two and that's actually going to move him from the puppyhood into more of the adult stage. I don't think that the dog knows exactly when it's going to be, but that's what the vet says when they turn two. All right, so here's my potato patty. I am going to go ahead, like I said, just because I've messed up the surface on this a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and touch a butter to it. I didn't have to until recently, um, but here I go. I'm putting the potato patty right on there. A little bit of butter on the top. I didn't do that. And there we go. So I should have set this so you guys could see it. I'm sorry. There's the potato cake. There we are with the griddle. I'm going to move this bowl out of the way. So I'm going to cook this to about 200 also. And The reason I'm going to cook this to 200 is because it's got this quick in it and you want your bread recipes to get out to about 200 degrees because um, that's about the time that they're done, whether it's loaf bread or biscuits. And since this has got the bisquick, I just think it's going to be better to go to about that mark. 
Yeah. And, and again, if there's something down the road that you guys want to see me do on a griddle, just holler at me. Just, you know, leave me a comment down below or send me a text or a tweet and let me know. Instagram is good too. Whoa. You see the steam escaping? This is not smoke. This is indeed steam. And that means we're getting there with the potato. So I don't I don't know how long it's gonna take it to cook. Like I said, we're we're trying together to see if this works. But I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't. So I'll pull that lid just a little tighter. So yeah, so how are you all doing? Are you all having good weather? I hope so. Believe it or not, the other day, um, the, the weather was predicted to be 36 degrees and raining. And I thought, it's not going to rain at 36 degrees, you know? So I went out, had to take Fipsy out, and I went out and checked. And the weather did not get as cold as they said it was going to. So at 40 degrees, we had rain. And I was like, so glad for that. Because absolutely, it's too late in the year for snow. It's like, no. Although I did see it snow Mother's Day weekend once um, here. But it was just flurries. It just really more kind of a heavy spitting of the snow. So, yeah, a little bit crazy there. This is, we're way up in the mountains. And Southwest Virginia is big, big, big with, with mountains. And so our weather is a little bit different than the rest of the world in that it stays cooler up here year round. So it doesn't, the, the benefit is during the summer, we don't have too much of like the 95 and 100 degrees degree days like they do like down south in Tennessee, down toward Chattanooga, let's say, uh, where it can get a lot warmer there. So, it, it's it's a trade-off, you know? It's a trade-off. So, but I'll take it. Valerie says it was beautiful out today. Yay! Good. I'm glad because I am, I, I am getting really tired of bad weather. I, I want I want spring here. I want nice weather. I don't want any of this, you know, cold. It's time for cold to go. So yeah. So let's see this. Okay, we still got a lot of steam coming out. That's okay. That is okay. It's just a sign we got a little bit longer to go, but we are indeed getting there. And I'm not sure how much water was in this. Um, it probably had a substantial amount because it, it, this was an instant potato and not a um, home mashed potato, which is very rare for me. I actually do the, the regular potato cooking and not so much the flakes. But I will do flakes when I'm out on the road. And I give you a hint, okay? It makes a wonderful potato soup. So if you are out um, in a van doing van life and all you want to do is heat up some water, throw them in the, some potato, throw in some potato flakes, toss some cheese in there and mix it all up. And you have a really quick super fast, super easy, easy, easy soup to do. Okay. Yep. Oh, this is going to be a mess. I can already tell we may, we may have hit a disaster. I'm going to give it another, another minute or so before I open this up. Give 
give me a minute to give my courage up on opening this mini griddle because I have a feeling this may be a disaster. Like I said, we're all on, on this, on the potato cake, this we are all finding out at the same time, okay? So work with me here if it's a mess. All right. Oh, I'm almost afraid to do this. Here we go. I'm going to pull this down so you guys cross your fingers for me here. I don't know how this is going to go. Is it done? Okay, it is at 207 degrees. Turn that. And it's not as bad as I was afraid it was going to be. I was really afraid this was going to be a disaster. And it's not. And I am so glad it's not. Of course, I don't have it up off of here yet. Uh-oh, it's sticking. There we go. Got it. And that is our potato pancake. Yay. Okay. Well, so far, so good, you all. I'm going to take this and set it aside. And now... Let's do some rice. How do y'all feel about just a little bit of fried rice? Okay. So for the fried rice, I'm just doing rice and vegetables. Hang on a second, I'm gonna move the cheese. Okay. So I'm just doing rice and vegetables and Normally, I would use oil when I'm at home, but when I'm out in the van, I don't usually have oil. I'm more likely to have butter just because that seems to work. It's more versatile, I think, than, than just oil. And I, I started using this. I really like it. Not, not a sponsored video. I just kind of have to say I like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the butter on there to let it kind of do its thing. I'm going to pull this back down, too, so you can see me put it on here. Okay. And the first time I did this, I was out at the gas station and had gotten an egg roll. This was a couple, uh, three, four years ago. Gotten an egg roll and had a soy packet left over. And I was like, you know, I've got some rice. I'm just going to try it and see. And it worked out really good. Okay, I'm going to put some veggies in here. You're not going to do a lot at a time, okay? Actually, I'm going to put a little more rice on that. Okay. And you, you all, you don't have to have home-cooked rice for this. What I use most of the time when I'm out in the van is those pre-cooked packages. Just rip the top off and put them in the griddle. Or if you're doing soup, just rip the top off and throw them in whatever soup you're doing. You don't have to microwave them to cook them as long as you're cooking it. You don't, you don't have to microwave it. So let me see what 
because I just take. Hang on, I don't know what I did to my spatula. I left sugary. I left the spatula over there. So I'm going to see here. I may have to add just a little more butter. Yep, I do. Yeah. Valerie said it looks pretty good. Yay! I'm glad you like it. It really, it really is easy. Um, you know, I can't say enough about it. Like I say, this is my primary cooking method. Uh, when I'm out doing van life, you know, you take it to hotels. You, you talked about the dorm. I'm not pushing this. I'm just saying this is how I cook when I'm on the road. And I use the nostalgia mini griddle. But we have had Irene with Iron Fire Horse come, came in and she says that she uses the Dash mini griddle. Same process, same, same type of appliance. So, yeah. It's just, it's easier to clean and store than a lot of other things. You know, I could get one of those cooktops. I could get a gas camping stove and there's tons of other products out there. I do have the camp stove and I also have the little single burner that fits on the green gas tank. I do have that, um, but out of those things, this is what I like to cook on. And you're thinking, well, you know, can't you cook over a fire? And no, actually, you can't always cook over a fire. The last time I went to Alaska, all the way up there, all the way up there, except maybe in a couple of spots, they had red flag warnings out and you couldn't start a fire. So I had to cook in the van. So I was either using the solar oven that I brought with me that was homemade, it's a DIY solar oven, or find an alternative way. This was my alternative way. It worked out pretty darn good. Okay. Let me get a plate here and I'll show you how well it does on the fried rice. So we went through breakfast and now we've, st we've started hitting lunch and dinner here. Oh, wow. Everything's hot. It looks good. And I'm going to go ahead now. I was going to sprinkle some soy sauce on it. And let it cook that way. And y'all know I buy but I'm Misfits boxes, uh, and I use those a lot. This vinaigrette dressing, I'm actually going to put on my stir fry because it is delicious. And it's real thick too. So we did the sausage and we did the pancake um, and we did the biscuits. So those are very definitely breakfast items. And we found the potato patty, um, mashed potato patty or um, potato pancake, call it that, uh, which is more of a lunch or a dinner item. And now we're doing the, can you hear it cooking? Uh, now we're doing the fried rice, which is a lunch or dinner item. So this video is really taking you um, on some ideas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the mini griddle. Let's see. Valerie says, where is my next trip to? Um, 
Actually, my next trip is really probably going to be down to Knoxville. I've got some doctor's appointments coming up. And so usually when I have to be there at eight in the morning, I'll drive down the night before. Um, we, we are Harvest Host members, so I don't have to worry about paying for a place to sleep. Plus, you know, with a van, there, there's Cracker Barrels, there's some Walmarts, and it's different places, truck stops and so forth, where you can spend the night without having to pay. But as a Harvest Host member, I love this membership because you do wind up having to spend $20 at your host site. Not all host sites charge that, but it gives you a safe place to be for the night. So I don't have to worry about the police knocking on my door um, or, you know, it being, you know, not great on security. There's been a couple of, of harvest host sites that have gotten some feedback about being locked in at night. Like, they'll close the gates and they'll give you a gate code so you can let yourself out. Um, I talked to one woman who was staying in a place and she's like, that really made her feel uncomfortable. But for me, um, as a solo female traveler, I like that. So yeah, I'll go down there and I'll stay um, at one of the harvest host sites in Knoxville. So that's my, my next thing coming up. I keep thinking I'll get away for a little short vacation, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. So I want to get to the beach. And the beauty of van life is you're not having to spend anything except gas to go to the beach, except getting a campsite if you choose to stay directly on the beach. Otherwise, there's Harvest Host, there's Walmarts, and so forth. And you can drive over to the public beach access for the day. But the last time we went to the Outer Banks, I used my National Parks Pass where I had the access pass and that gets you, when they're available, half price accommodations at campgrounds. So with electricity and water, we wound up paying $18 for the night at the campsite. And I'm like, oh, I want to go back. Get away, get away, get away for a couple of days. So in a perfect world, in a perfect world. But yeah, I've got a, a thing coming up in Knoxville with the doctor. And then Pipsy's got a major appointment. Um, actually, I'm going to ask for prayers on this. He's got a major appointment coming up on the 19th. And it is an eye exam and an orthopedic exam. Now, these are covered in full uh, because of it having him as a service dog. And this is a humdinger of an eye exam that they do. They will be dilating his eyes and numbing drops and the whole thing, just like they do for people. But, and, but I have no concerns over his eyes at all. But this is an annual event for service dogs. Um, and part of it, the orthopedics part, is a study where they're trying to determine if service animals have more hip and joint problems than non-service animals. Oh, 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 am I burning this? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> and we've got him into that, but he, he's showing some signs. He's only two. Um, and he, he may have a hip issue. We are not sure. Um, the x-ray was okay. So that gives, gives me a lot of hope. Um, and we're just gonna, you know, one, one test at a time. But if he, this, orthopedic workup is, is huge. So we come out of there knowing if he's got a congenital, congenital hip issue or not. If he does have a congenital hip issue, this, according to two veterinarians that I've talked to, this is not something that the program could have foreseen. Um, his parents check out fine his grandparents check out fine. They, they've got the lineage, okay? The breeding program does. So the vets say this is this is not the thing that, that the program could have foreseen. So we have a certain time limit on the dogs where if there's a problem, uh, they can go back to the program. We passed that about six months ago. So if, if he's got hip and joint issues, then I'm not going to be able to use him 
for balancing and bracing and counterbalancing, um, which is what I got him for. Um, he, he's dead on the mark as far as alerting for blood sugar. I mean, he, he's, and he does a lot of other things, you know, the retrieval, the knowing about the asthma attacks and going and getting my medicines. He's learned how to do that. So he does a lot of other things. Um, but if it's a hip or joint issue, then we've got to, I've, I've got to figure out what in the heck I'm going to do because I have no clue. Um, because that's what I, I got him for was the balancing and the counterbalancing. Um, so I really don't know what this is going to be. So we've got this. Um, I'm, I'm a little, I'm concerned. And the other possibility, which the two possibilities are about equal. Um, the other possibility is that he was running and playing so hard that he pulled a tendon and just, you know, strained and, and had a sore muscle and just like we would. So one's to be expected and, and no problem at all. The other one is not to be expected and is a big problem. So I don't, I don't know. Um, some programs, okay, when they place a dog with you, if something like this was to happen to your dog, and I understand Guide Dogs of the Blind does this, okay? Um, but some programs, if they place a dog with you and something happens, they replace the dog. Um, I don't know about this one. I have no clue. Hopefully he just, I hate to, I feel bad because I hate to say, gee, I hope he hurt himself. But on the other hand, for this particular time, it's like, gee, I really hope he hurt himself. You know, it's like the lesser of the two things. But anyway, back to the, back to the rice. Let's see what's happening here. Um, Oh my gosh, you all, <laughs> this smells fabulous. And there we are with the fried rice. So now this is not something you're going to be able to like really cook egg in. You're going to want to do that separately. So you're going to have really fried rice with an egg. Um, rather than mixing it up in here. And that's just because the griddle is so small. Let me get a hot pad. I should have been using the hot pad the whole time. I actually dug this up. No, it is not Christmas, but it was made by Miss Valerie Reese, so I thought it would be fun to use tonight. So listen to me all. If y'all need a hot pad, talk to Valerie. And I'm just going to put this over here on this plate. Ouch. And this, I will say, is probably the messiest dish that I, I make on any out of anything that I do on the griddle. Here we go. Flick, I'm just going to flick this out. <laughs> okay, so here we are with the fried rice. Oh, I think it's steaming up the camera. Sorry, you all. <laughs> Sorry, you all. Never mind, I won't show it to you. 
I am, however, going to go set it over here to the side. Whoops. As I knock this whole thing off, I'm telling you. Um, I'm going to do some squash because that's a popular side item if you're in the south and you can do it on your griddle. So I'm going to show you that. Um, and all I do for this is pop it right there on the griddle, all the little pieces there. Now on this, hang on just a second, let me get the water, there it is. I'm gonna show you what I do for this. Okay, so I've got, Here we go. So I just went ahead and put the squash on here, set it down just like this. Be careful doing this because you're not supposed to immerse it, but I add just maybe a couple of teaspoons of water there uh, with the squash. And that'll kind of steam it as it cooks. Now, the amount of time that it takes to cook the squash varies on how done you like your squash. So if you like it really just crisp, tender, it's only going to take it about a minute. Uh, if you like it a little bit more cooked, then obviously it's going to take a little bit longer. So it is really good sauteed. And let me go back to some of the comments here. Let's see. We do, we do. Now, um, this is an annual eye exam and he's not going because it's because he's got eye problems. He does not have eye problems that I can tell. He just, they do this annually. So this will establish a baseline and it's a free eye exam. It's, you don't have to pay for it. Your dog just has to be a working dog. So either a service dog or a therapy dog, a trained therapy dog, not an ESA. So we're that's why we're having it done, but they do it um, at the same time as they do the ortho clinic. So that's the part I'm worried about, but one step at a time. So yeah, yeah, um, these really are good. I'm gonna tell you. That looked like something Val would make, beautiful. Yes, she does. She does a great job. These are these are the perfect weight and the perfect size. I love them. Oh, I wish I didn't know that. I like sun. Lori likes sunflowers too. Second video for Black Friday. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Black Friday will be here. Get out of the splash. Yeah, a little bit of water really helps the squash. It helps cook it a little faster. And let's see what we got here. Yep. These, these are cooked perfectly for the way I like to have them. So I'll show you. Um, and these are... These are really soft. I don't know if you can tell, but this is going in pretty good. So definitely this is the way I like to have them. So I'm going to pull these. Let me get the plate. Just a second here. I'm actually just going to put them on the same plate as the fried rice. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
And th this really more steams them than anything. You can just flat saute them. There's nothing wrong with that. I usually just add just a little bit of water. And again, wipe it out. You don't want to add much water, though, because this is, you're not supposed to get this wet. So only a few drops, literally a couple of teaspoons at the most. Okay. So there you go there. So there you go with that. And now I think the last thing that I'm going to do is some um, steak tacos, soft steak, soft tacos. This over here. Because again, I've got um, a little piece of steak left over from the other day, and I think it's going to be perfect for steak soft tacos. And I've done it with fajitas and so forth, too. So you do it just like you would anything else. You, you take your meat and slice it up. Ah. Without cutting your fingers, by the way. Safety first. I don't know if everything I do here would be OSHA approved um, since I'm not in an OSHA kitchen, but use your own precautions. I guess I should have said that at the beginning. Be careful what you do. Don't get hurt. Don't run with knives, that kind of thing. Don't run with scissors, rather. Be careful with knives. All that stuff that I probably should have said at first, right? <laughs> So for this, I'm just going to put the pieces of steak on here. My mother would have a fit if she saw me doing this with my fingers. Ha! Huh? So I'm just going to pack this in pretty tightly here because I've got, I think, just enough that I can fill it without having to run a second layer. Okay, here we go. There's that sizzle. I'm going to rinse my fingers off and I will be right back just a second. All right, and obviously this is steak, so I can go ahead and put the seasoned salt on it and stuff, but what I really like to do, <laughs> I love this stuff. I'm going to put on just a touch of this, which is the salad dressing stuff that I just had a few minutes ago that I put on the rice. So, yeah, I really like this stuff.
And I'm not sure how long it stay, takes steak to cook, but I know it's a, a few minutes there. All right. So since Lori brought up the Black Friday event, and since Lori and Val are both Black Fridayers, I uh, want to go ahead. Yeah, I don't think it's too early to let you know that we will, I'm assuming, be doing the Black Friday charity event again this year. And all the funds raised goes to Valerie's church and they use it for things like feeding the hungry, getting Christmas together, feeding a, a, for a backpack program and all kinds of ministries that they do and they're involved with. So that is coming up to Black Friday, which is for those of you who are not in the U.S. and may not be familiar with it, it is the day after Thanksgiving. So we'll be doing that. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's an all day thing. And if you have a channel and you want your channel to participate, you go ahead and just leave a comment down below and tag Valerie Reese in it. If you can, if, if you can't find your channel, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, leave that comment down below anyway, and I will put you in touch with her. The fun day, it's a, it's a long day, it's a fun day. A bunch of channels participate and it starts like at eight o'clock in the morning and it goes to like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Um, no, it goes to like about midnight. And it's, it's just, it's a lot of fun. A lot of channels participate and it's a lot of fun. So, so there you go. There, there's my, my comment there. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it. Last year, Lori did a, phenomenal job her channel's music she did a, a phenomenal job singing it just everybody just pitches in and we do great 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 things on that day so we need channels to participate channels to help us get the word out channels that might want to go in together and do a dual live stream stuff like that so yeah it, it's just it's just a fun day it's an, a lot of neat things going on there let me check this It's cooking along. Still got a little ways to go there, but it is coming along nicely. And your your meat, it, it releases juice and water. So what you may want to do periodically as you go along, if you're going to do steak, is you may want to um, get a towel or whatever and get some of the liquid out, which is actually what I'm doing right now. Plus I added some when I added the um, dressing. Just don't take so much out that you kill your flavor, right? Okay. You can hear that. Sizzle, sizzle. And Lori says, yeah. And now she has more followers, at least on my Women's Station channel, though singing should be on this one. Okay, you all, singing on this one right here with Lori. And Valerie's saying it's a fun day. And yes, yes, it is. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I will say that it's just phenomenal to see the YouTube community come together. It's the Create Not Hate YouTube community. Uh, and to see Pet Monster and Monster Chick and what they've done by putting these people together and, and Granny Monster and the other channels, it, it's, just, it's just heartwarming to see a group of committed people coming together every year on Black Friday to make that charity event happen. It's just, it's amazing to me. So y'all, that'll be, you know, Black Friday. Now let me go back and check this steak for a minute. I just want to make sure I'm not going to overcook them. No, it's good. A little bit more to go. I like my steaks kind of well done and we are not there yet. Nope, 140 degrees is what I've got. So definitely not there yet. So, and also on the Nostalgia Mini Griddle, 
Um, you can do like mashed bananas if you like those. You can saute anything. So you can do the squash. You can do the zucchini if you like that. Cabbage does really well on it. And apples, um, any, any kind of like berries, those cook well on it. And of course, bacon and eggs and everything you just saw me cook. So really versatile. Um, certainly grilled cheese. I did the chicken satay, the, the chicken lettuce wraps on it. There's a video on that too. And that went really well. All right. Now this is releasing some steam, which is a good sign that we're getting there. Let me see if I can tilt this down so you can see the steam. Hope you all can see the steam rising there. Now let me check. I know these are small pieces, but yep, 180. That'll be cooked well enough for anybody, right? Okay, I'm going to have to get both hands here. And this may get a little messy, so just work with me here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's going to be messy. I'm glad I'm doing this off camera. Oh, okay. So it's time for me to wipe this out. And now since this is soft tacos, I want to warm up my tortillas. So I've got to wipe it out pretty good for that. And then to warm up the tortillas, all I'm going to do is put it on there for a minute. And these Mission Street taco tortillas are the perfect size for this grill. Perfect. So I'm going to put those on there. And I'm going to put on two at a time. And we'll just go ahead and let those warm on up. Tell you the other thing is this mini griddle oh my gosh if you're if you want to make some really quick really good quesadillas use those mini tacos and you are just throw one on throw the cheese in it throw the other taco uh, other mini street taco on that mission street and um you're good you are golden and let's see what else did Lori say uh, people like to connect to other things than just singing. That's why I love doing the Women's Station channel. It'll probably raise more money. Well, you never know how it's going to go. But I do think that people like to connect over different things. And it's really cool to see everybody connecting. Okay. 
So, all right, you all, these are already warmed up. Can you see the steam escaping? And this is going to be the last thing I cook. So I'm just going to go ahead and stuff these. This. Whoops. Whoops. Well, I was hoping to divide it a little more evenly, but oh well, that's okay. And I like putting a little bit of cabbage on it. Some people like lettuce. I think cabbage gives it a little more crunch, and I like that. And then I'll finish these off with just a tiny little bit of cheese. And that's that. So we've done breakfast, lunch, and dinner on the mini griddle. And I'm so glad I had my husband here to help me eat this. Because there's no way I could. So what do you all think? Is this a good way to, to cook in the van? Let me know. Um, just drop that either in the chat box or in the comments, depending on where you are. Because um, this is the primary way I do it. I just showed you like some of the more common things that I do in the van, except for the potato pancake, because I don't, have never done that before. I wanted to see if that would work. And I wanted to toss something in here that had the potential for failure just so we could see. Um, but it worked and it smells really good. So I think I'm going to go get that and try it. Hang on just a second. I am going to put it back on here. I'm going to warm it up. So I'm going to put it right back on here for a minute to warm it up because it's, ah, it's gotten a little cool. Oh, I got to get a fork. See how this works. Valerie thinks it's perfect. I, I do too for travel. I love it. This just a minute. I'm glad I hadn't unplugged it yet. Oh, and the other thing about this is when you unplug it, just open it up and it'll be cool in a minute or two. Um, it's very, very short time. So you don't have to worry too much about putting it up hot because it just cools so quickly. Okay. And this is warmed up a bit. All right, y'all. The potato pancake. Let's let's see how it did. The potato cake. It got a nice layer, even layer of brown on both sides. Whoops, I left part of that on the plate. Darn it. Here we go. <laughs> There's part of the layer of brown right there. So. It's perfect. The flavor is good. It doesn't have the crunchiness that you would have if you fried it in oil. 
but the flavor is really, really good. It's definitely cooked. Yeah, this is this is one I'm gonna do again. So it was yeah, I'm happy with this. So yay, the experiment worked. The potato patty is really really good. So you all, I'm gonna figure out something to do with all of this and call my husband in to help me eat this. And I will talk to you all later. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. And you all take care. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Good night, you all.